Kate, I forgot to press play, but we had a bit of a chat about setting in for uh, Afri setting intentions, and we did our warm up stretches, which you're probably familiar with by now. And now we're coming up onto our feet, so hopefully you'll get the rest of it now. Sorry about that. Okay. So yeah, parts of me are cut off, but that's fine. You don't necessarily need to see all of me. All right, so feet apart and roll the hips a bit. So change the angle of your feet to whatever feels comfortable. Remember to try and keep your head in the center and it's the hips that are moving. Round the other way. Now, if you feel a good stretch on the inside of the thigh, for example, and you want to pause there, do pause for a breath or two. And then move on. Now feel it here. And we can always make the circles quite small for just a little bit of movement and flexibility of the hips. But if you make them bigger, you really push forward and you're rounding your back back it can be really nice for releasing pressure in this lower part of your back so maybe the circles are small just for the hips or bigger to really push into any tension there make sure you go around in both directions okay now bring your feet a little bit closer together and we're going to do a few forward bends move at your own pace if you want to go into forward bend flow out of it flow into it and keep flowing that way that's fine let me just watch out for the lampshade there so hands together in prayer position elbows out palms together breathe inhale stretch up and stretch as tall as you can keep breathing stretch one hand a little higher than the other as if you're trying to grab something from the ceiling. Now bring the hands back together. Exhale, flow forward. So remember you're folding from your hips, keep your torso straight like a lever as much as you can. And if your body's really tense and tight, maybe you just come to the halfway point. But try to keep your back in neutral. Even if you just come here, that's fine. Try not to lean back onto your heels or forward onto your toes, four corners of your feet taking the weight. Bend the knees a little if you need to. So if the calves are super tight or I'm feeling it really quite a lot here today, um, you may prefer to bend a little bit so you can go a bit deeper into it. Or hold yourself with the torso up a little bit higher and feel the tension here. Stretch it out and breathe. So it's up to you. Hold. And allow yourself to kind of settle into it and let the body gently start to stretch out or keep flowing if you prefer so maybe you flow down move a little bit like a rag doll then flow up again and repeat it's totally up to you and what feels good for you maybe you go deeper into it maybe you stop somewhere like this like number seven or a halfway point Gently resting your hands on the legs, not too forcefully, but keeping your back in neutral and your neck as well. Bend the knees a little if you like, or if you feel that you're pushing the knees back, maybe that helps you go a little bit deeper into it. And either keep flowing if you prefer a bit more dynamic movement, dynamic stretching, or hold. Sometimes holding the more yin approach will help us move into the stretch a little bit more. But if you prefer to keep moving, that's fine. At your own pace, I'm going to come back up again. really feeling I'm thinking back now to all the problems that I had with inflammation in my shoulders and no wonder I did but just after um, two massages yesterday I can feel all the tension up the back of my legs and in my shoulders um, but more 
probably because the, the massage table is not built for me. So I had to kind of bend over it in funny ways. But still, it was really good to get back into doing it. So let the tension out of your body, depending on how you're feeling. It's going to feel more difficult and awkward if you're really tight. So take a little more time to help everything stretch out gently. If you try and push it and force it, those tight muscles are just going to flinch to try and protect you. Now, if you're super, super stiff and you want to use your hands to help a little bit gently, you can use the hands to maybe pull a little bit for a second or two and then release. One more. Stretch it out, breathe it out. And take your time, come back to standing when you feel ready. And shake it out. We're going to try head to knee bend. Drink some water if you need it. Remember, ignore the name. You do not need to try and get your knee to your head, but we're moving uh, your head to your knee. We're moving in that direction. I start with my feet a little bit apart, about hip width, and I'm going to bring one foot forward. So be careful you don't land with one foot directly in front of the other. It'll be impossible to balance. Just step forward. It doesn't need to be a huge amount. Try to keep both feet facing towards the front. So if you step so far forward that you need to twist your body, you've gone too far. Now try to keep the legs straight, keep the torso straight and gently come down into this stretch. You may like to have the hands on the legs for a little bit of support and hold. Where I'm feeling that is up the back of this leg here. If you start to twist your hips, watch out for that. Try and keep everything facing the front here. Let the arms hang if you prefer or rest them on the leg a little bit. Breathe. I'm also feeling it along my shin. Go deeper into it if you like in, and if you need to. If your body is stiff, you're probably not going to go too deep. Breathe. This kind of stretch can feel quite intense. So take your time. Be careful not to push against your knee. Sometimes after a few breaths, you'll feel yourself move into it a little bit more. A little bit. Take your time, move slowly back up when you're ready and over to the other side. Always bend your knees a little bit or soften them before you bring your feet back together just to protect your knees. Other foot goes in front. So again, be careful. If you step so far forward that you twist, you've gone too far. So it doesn't have to be a huge step forward. Careful not to land that foot directly in front of the other. Keep hips and chest facing towards the foot and lean down into it. Now you might feel it in different places where I'm feeling it today is the calf, the back of the knee and in the shin. That's where I'm feeling a lot of tension. And it feels uncomfortable. But I'm going to breathe. Re relax into it as much as possible. Use the hands on the leg for a bit of support, being careful not to start twisting. Gently, gently. Go a little deeper if you can, and if you want to, keep your back in neutral. Don't be tempted to start kind of trying to pull your forehead in towards your knee, even though the name of the pose suggests head to knee requires a lot of flexibility to do that. Okay, now I feel it more in my hamstring. So this has released a little bit. Just in those few seconds, the calf and the, the ligaments at the back of the knee here have released a little. And now I feel it more in my calf. So things are moving and shifting, even though sometimes it can feel very uncomfortable, feels very stiff. Come back up gently. 
Let's repeat on each side. Bend your knees before bringing the feet back together. Shake it out a little bit. Okay. Feet hip width apart. Step forward, being careful not to land that foot directly in front of the other. Also being careful not to twist. Gently come forward. If you want, you could rest the hands behind your back if you find that helps. Keep your torso in a straight position, neutral position. And if you find yourself twisting like this, the crack, I just had a crack in my hip there. That's why we don't want to twist. Bring yourself back to the center. Hands on the leg if you prefer, just be careful not to press heavily against your knee. So it's really tempting to twist like this. It feels more natural sometimes, more comfortable. Don't bring yourself back into the correct position. <sighs> Breathe. Okay, so this time I'm feeling it less on my shin. That's stretched out a little bit, it's released. And I feel it more now around the, the back of the knee here and up into the hamstring. Always be wary of feeling things pulling tightly at the back of your knee because it's a lot of ligaments and tendons there and it signifies that there is a lot of tension in the muscles and they're pulling on them. So be mindful of that. Now I'm feeling it much more in the hamstring. <sighs> Come gently out of it when you're ready. Spend a little bit more time there if you want. Soften your knees before bringing the feet back together. Shake it out. We'll do one more on the other leg. <sighs> oh, that feels much better already. Sometimes the more awkward ones, when you start to feel that bit of a release, it's so good. Okay, feet hip width apart, step forward, being careful not to step in front of the other foot. Don't twist your torso. Hands behind the back if you like, or they're gonna rest on the leg. Come forward. If you start to twist, bring yourself back to the center. Oops. Gently holding onto the leg, being careful not to push the knee. Keep the torso in neutral. So your upper body is like a lever. We're folding from the hips, as always. Already it feels different on this side now. And note, I'm not forcing. I'm just letting it happen. My body doesn't feel like it's being forced, therefore it feels comfortable to let go a little bit. It's not trying to protect me. And that's when you'll get the stretch. Hold as long as you like. When you feel ready, come back up. Bend the knees a little before bringing the feet back in and shake it out. Lovely. wide and we're going to kind of go level one level two level three so first of all I'm going to turn my toes out a little bit for balance and I'm just going to move from side to side a little bit keeping my torso tall in the center I'm moving by bending the knees so a bit of movement for my knees and my ankles don't let your knees go far ahead of your toes if that happens maybe widen your stance a little bit should feel a little bit of a stretch here so keep that knee really wide open so this might be enough it's almost like putting a bit of WD-40 on the hinge of a door and moving the door back and forth to get things moving again it's kind of similar to what we're doing here for the hips and keep going with that movement if that's working for you otherwise bring your feet into position as if you're standing on train tracks, heels back, toes forward, and we'll go into fencer. Fingertips together, inhale, lift up towards the chest, exhale, open. Inhale, turn the foot to the side, look at the hand, exhale, bend. So now you're gonna feel that stretch more here. Keep the back leg straight, don't bend. 
Don't let this knee go ahead of your toes, but try and bring yourself as low to the floor as you can. And at the same time, we want the torso tall in the center. Try not to lean forward. So as I reach forward there, I feel a lot of pressure where I have tension in my back today. So that's interesting. This is exactly why we want to stay in the center. Keep the back arm up. Sink into it, feel the stretch, and you're building strength in the front leg as well. Come back to center and over to the other side. So I've brought my toes back round. You can go straight over to the other side if you like, or shake it out first. Keep the chest wide open here. So we are turning slightly towards this foot, but because we want to keep that arm back behind us, not to the side, the chest will be nice and open and facing out to the side. So again, keep this back leg straight. Don't bend it. Try and sink to the floor as much as you can. Don't let this knee go ahead of your toes. Also, don't let it drift in. Keep it open wide. Keep your torso tall in the center and keep the back arm up behind you. Back arm tends to drift to the side or down, so keep it up there. And repeat, come back to center and shake it out if you prefer. Maybe go back to our level one movement and then repeat. Lift the hands up, open wide, turn the toes to the side, look at the hand, bend the knee and sink into it. So keep going. A couple of little pointers as well. I'm going to just change my camera angle so I can explain these. But you keep going there, hold, breathe. So things you want to watch out for. When you turn the toes out, turn them all the way out to the side. If you only go part of the way, your knee is going to try and follow your toes and you'll end up at a funny angle. Always turn the toes right out to the side. Your knee will track maybe your second toe. So mind that your knee doesn't start to drift. It puts a lot of pressure on your knee and your ankle. In fact, keep it out over your foot. Keeping the torso tall and the back arm up. Over to the other side, bring the foot back round, other foot goes out, bend and away you go. So the toes are actually important because your knee will usually track your big toe or your second toe. And that's the secure position for your knee. So if you only bring your foot round part of the way, your knee is going to be here following your toes as it should. You'll be trying to open it and it doesn't work. So always be careful of that. Toes all the way out so your knee will follow them. So we're repeating it on each side. Sink into it to feel the stretch. And if you feel that you're not really getting much stretch, it may be that you need to widen your stance a little bit more. It can be tempting to lean your torso forward, but don't do that to put pressure on your back. So yeah, it's really tempting to do this in the center. So be sure you've done both sides. Keep going if you're in the middle of it. Then come back to center with the feet. Now for a bit of balance, I'm gonna let the toes go out to the side a little bit. And my knee will still track the second toe or the big toe. But that's okay because I'm doing a slightly different movement here. Keep your feet wide and bring yourself into a wide angle forward bend. Remember to fold from the hips and keep your back in neutral and your neck. Move a little bit. Be careful not to lean back onto the heels or forward onto the toes. Let yourself hang gently. 
free. If you can easily touch the floor, that's great. If not, you might like to touch the legs. Take your time, move whatever way feels good. Take as much time as you would like. Come back up. Soften the knees before bringing the feet back in. And another roll of the hips. So you can stay standing if you like or come back down onto the mat. I'm going to come down so you can see clearly what I'm doing, but that's the only reason. Stay on your feet if you prefer. We're going to do some more stretches for the shoulders. Drink a little bit of water. Let me just have a quick check of our time. Grand. Are you guys okay to go a few minutes over because we started a couple of minutes late? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay, so shoulders again. We're going to start by opening the shoulders out and the chest out as wide as possible. So just a gentle movement back and forth, but my arms are parallel to the floor. Stretch open as wide as you can and release. If you like, you can use the wall for this. And you'll stand facing the wall here. Arm is resting against the wall. Then you'll gently start to turn your torso away. So the wall will help you stretch that arm back. Use the wall if you would like. It can be a bit more effective. Marion, you could do this on the floor if you like. Your favourite one where you lie face down. Yes. And then roll over onto the, the shoulder. Kate, I'll show you that one in case you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about. This is Marion's favourite. So face down. Very, very gently here because it's strong. So I'll show you from both angles. Arm goes out at 90 degrees behind you. And you gently start to roll. Bend your knees to keep you there. Now, you might go here and then maybe you feel like, oh, shoulder doesn't like that weight. And then maybe you can go a little bit further. Bring this arm back a little if you like. And then hold. So just be mindful of the ligaments and all the stuff that goes on around your shoulder and your rotator cuff. Don't force it. From the other angle, Arm is out at 90 degrees, palm down. I slowly start to roll. Bring the knees up. And bring that hand back if you like. So I've done that quite quickly. You can take it a bit more slowly and be careful. Always move slowly to make sure that you're really listening to your body. And if the body doesn't like it, stop, wait. And then maybe you can go a little bit further. If the body doesn't like it one bit, don't do it, don't force it. Okay, so we've stretched wide open at this angle. Take your time if you're in the middle of it. And then come back to centre. Next, we're going to do one arm up, one down. Bend at the elbows. Try to bring the hands together behind your back. Use your prop if you like, if you have a sock or anything that you want to use. And be careful that you keep this elbow back. So if you're using a prop, you'll hold it in the hand that's up above, drop it down your back, and then grab on with the other hand. Hold it here. Try to keep that shoulder back. So notice what you feel here. Do you already feel a stretch? If so, you're going to hold it there. If it feels, let's say, too easy, Give the shoulders a very slight and gentle roll, but be careful with that one. Okay. 
you touching your fingers? Yes. Yes. So this is what I'm doing. Which depends on your body as well. So I'm hooking my fingers together and then keeping that elbow back. They're right along my spine here. But you may you might not be able to bring your hand there. So you might be more like this, holding off something. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. And sometimes on the other side it's not so easy. Just struggle a little bit more get into position and then make sure that you keep yeah so on this side it's not so easy and it's to do with where I feel it when I do the other side I feel it here which is where I had the injury last year so that's okay I'm just I'm aware of it I feel that it's tight there so I'm not forcing it and see how I go that's as far as I can go I'm not going to force it any more than that. My fingertips are touching. I'm not able to hook my fingers as much as I could on the other side. But that's fine. And we hold and we keep that elbow back to make sure you're not pressing against your neck. And breathe. So important for me to stretch all of this stuff around the, the bicep and all the ligaments here. Because that's where I had the injury before. You don't want that happening again. Slowly release. Always slowly. If you're twisted or it's intense, slowly, slowly out of it. And release. One arm across the chest and pull. So we're going to call this level one. This might be enough. Turn a little bit if you like. Take your time with it. I'm going to go a little bit faster. So level one, if you want to go to level two, you're going to do, I almost said dragon, I don't know what, why that came into my head, eagle. <laughs> eagle pose, arms up like a Barbie doll and bring the elbows and the palms together. And if that's difficult enough, don't go any further. If you can, I'm bringing my right arm underneath now. So I have the elbow of the left arm sitting into the crease of the right elbow, hands back to back. Again, that might be enough. Mind your shoulders. Mine are still parallel to the floor. If you start to lift one or twist a bit, you're going too far. Wrap around once more if you can. Again, that might be enough. But if you need more stretch, you're gently lifting the elbows and the fingers. Not the shoulders, but the fingers and the elbows. So this will give you a really good stretch out, but only go to the, the point or position that works for you. Don't force it. Hold for as long as you like. Again, I'm going to go a little more quickly, unraveling gently. And then we do the same on the other side. It may be best to stick with this if your shoulders are very tight and eagle is too much. Eagle on the other side then. This time the left arm goes under. Wrap around once more. So I've made a shark's fin in front of my face. My shoulders are still level. Lift the elbows and the fingers to stretch a little bit more. And slowly come out of it and shake okay so check in with what's happening in your body I feel like doing a twist here so you could do helicopter if you're on your feet or reach around as far as you can and hold and then repeat on the other side if you're sitting on the floor use the hands and push and pull a little over to the other side. Repeat a few times. And if you feel like you still need a little bit more for the shoulders and the back, 
onto hands and knees and into our different movements here of cat. Maybe puppy, bum in the air, hands forward, drop the chin and chest down. And then child's pose as well would be a nice gentle, gentle, gentle stretch for the back. Super gentle. All right. So be sure that you've gotten everything that you need. Work your back or move your back a little bit more before we go into meditation if you need that. And just be sure that your body is at least happier than it was when we started. If you feel you need to add anything else in or want to add anything else in, please feel free. How are you both feeling now?